Welcome to this edition of the Clinical Works Podcast. I'm Adam Silati. The COVID-19 crisis has forced many practices to rethink how they deliver patient care. Seeing the need to reinvent the pre-visit process from booking appointments online and contactless check-in to the visit itself with telehealth and integrated speech. But the period following the visit can be just as vital to patient health and practice success. Is it time to reinvent the post-visit process? Here to speak with me today is Hussein al Haj, Business Development at eClinical Works. Hussein, thank you so much for taking your time to be here today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Adam. Well, uh, Hussein, let's uh, start with the question, what is the post-visit and what are we really reinventing here? Sure. So this is a very good question. Um, it's no secret that we are in a very dynamic, rapidly changing industry. So the question becomes, what happens when the patient leaves the walls of the clinic? Um, what if these patients have chronic conditions, right? Um, what if they have to be hospitalized for chronic conditions? Um, and then, of course, introduce to the equation a global pandemic that really has an effect on everybody. The COVID-19 pandemic has um, uh, has, has made it absolutely clear that we can no longer limit patient care to the walls of uh, the clinics, and we really must extend it outside of these walls. So uh, we felt that a post-visit engagement strategy is absolutely essential, especially now more than ever. Um, and while it's been a topic of discussion for organizations in the past, I think it's been thrusted to the forefront at this particular point. And we know for it to be successful, it really has to provide a level of convenience, um, not just for the patients. We know it has to be convenient for the patient, but it also um, has to provide that level of convenience for organizations as well by uh, minimizing as much as possible manual processes and allowing practices to track progress. And what are some of the components of that post-visit strategy that you mentioned? What do practices, what are they going to need to focus on if they're thinking about this, this reinvention? Sure, absolutely. So it, it definitely has to be a multi-pronged approach. So first of all, um, you know, there is to a certain extent some level of engagement with the patient, but that process has to be improved. Um, and there's, you know, two major parts uh, to this equation, right? There's the clinician. Um, and then there's the patient, both play an important role. And it's important that uh, the patient has as much of a vested interest in the outcomes of their own health as the clinician. So how do we improve the process? First of all, it's maintaining a frequent communication with the patient, um, empowering the patient with information uh, that is accessible to them. And when I say accessible, it's gotta be conveniently accessible to the patient. Now, in addition to that, we may have some patients that are uh, extremely high risk, and we do have to have, as an organization, a, a targeted outreach strategy as well. The, the last and the most important thing is um, uh, how can a practice expand their services outside of these, those walls, uh, provide the appropriate care for the patient, and then find ways to get reimbursed for that care as well. All right, Hussein, let's start with the first topic that you mentioned, which was engagement. You know, I think a lot of offices are, are busier than ever. They have additional responsibilities and concerns at this time. What are those busy practices going to do to stay engaged with their patients while they have all these other things to think about? Uh, absolutely. Very good question. And uh, of course, the convenience has to be presented on both sides, as I uh, made the point a little bit earlier. And uh, I think one of the best ways to do so uh, by em uh, empowering the patient is um, uh, the use of the Hilo app. You know, everybody walks around with a smartphone in their hand. And if all I have to do to log into my app is, <clears throat> you know, do my touch ID and I have access to all my information, right? Things like post visit summary, labs information, patient education, referrals. I am now empowered as a patient and I can take a vested interest. And if I need to reach out to my provider, I could do it directly from the Hilo app. It is secured, it is encrypted, and the clinicians would be able to respond in kind. The majority of our population has a smartphone, and we found, um, especially these days, that um, uh, even older patients have been utilizing it. Well, Hussein, uh, the Hilo app certainly provides a lot of convenience and information to the patient in terms of visit summaries, lab results, prescription notifications, et cetera. 
But what about information going the other way? If we are getting these patients more engaged and reinventing this post-visit process, what are practices going to know about their patients that they might not have known before? Um, excellent question. So the great thing about the Hilo app is the patient's ability uh, to integrate, to integrate um, wearables and uh, tracking devices directly with the Hilo, Hilo app. Um, and there's a plethora of different devices that the Hilo app supports. There's uh, many different kinds of trackers that integrate information directly with the Hilo app. And what's great about it is at the point of care, the provider has the ability to access the Hilo app, uh, the Hilo hub, and view this tracker information uh, directly within the progress note. This can provide uh, significant information in helping the provider make appropriate medical decisions and put together uh, an appropriate plan uh, of care for that patient. Hussein, you also mentioned the need to do outreach to these patients in between visits. What kind of outreach are we talking about and, and how would that happen in this reinvented process? Um, absolutely. So uh, ECW has, utilizing Messenger and ECW, we have um, 50 plus uh, campaigns that practices can enable to determine which population of patients they want to outreach to. And within these messenger campaigns, we have different categories of campaigns. So this outreach could be administrative in nature. Um, let's say you want to reach out to patients that have not had their annual wellness visit this year. And we know statistics clearly show that only about 25% of patients actually come for an annual wellness visit. So we know that there's a big gap over there, and that's one way to help close the gap. So these campaigns allow you to identify the subset of patients that have chronic conditions that maybe require more intervention, a higher level of patient engagement. And when you set the parameters for these campaigns, you can determine essentially what modalities these messages go to. You know, Hussein, I think one of the other important campaigns that's out there is that no-show campaign, right? Uh, missed appointments is, missed revenue for practices, and right now that's more important than ever. Um, so that campaign, which will communicate automatically with those patients who didn't show up for their visit and then allow them to rebook their appointment, I think is a critical piece in this uh, in this reinvention of the post-visit. Um, and speaking of services, uh, we, we mentioned the need to expand services at this time. Where is there an opportunity to add services uh, with these practices who are already busy enough? Um, absolutely. So, you know, as we talked about, you know, adding these services is going to require the utilization of resources from the practice side. So practices may tell you, we just don't have the capacity. We don't have the time. There's a cost associated with it. Now, what practices may not know is there are programs out there, some of which have been recently um, introduced and some that have been out for numerous years that will reimburse you for engaging those patients. So there's the CCM program, the Chronic Care Management Program, which was introduced by CMS. These are for your Medicare and your Medicare Advantage patients back in 2015. And um, historically, some of the hindrances for that program was the fact that uh, in the past, patients had to pay a co-insurance or a co-pay. Because of COVID-19, CMS basically said, we are waiving co-pays. For patients. So this is an, an absolute great opportunity for practices to take advantage of this and sign patients up. If you have Medicare age patients. What about uh, what about patients who do wind up in the hospital, Hussein? Um, what are we doing uh, to, to uh, manage those patients in between visits? Absolutely. Very good question. So uh, just to take a step back, the purpose of the chronic care management program is to try as much as possible to prevent hospital visits, right? Now, if it gets to the point where the patient does has a, have a hospital visit, uh, there's also a transition of care management program um, that is available from CMS as well. And uh, with this program, when a patient has been discharged from an acute care visit, whether it was for COVID-19 or for lack of management of their other chronic conditions, be it diabetes or hypertension, um, the goal is to, as much as possible, prevent the readmission to the hospital within 30 days. Uh, the transition of care program will essentially allow you to track um, once that patient has been discharged from a hospital, the first thing the hospital is going to do is contact the primary care physician and say this patient has been discharged. This is going to be done, whether it's done through fax or through an email or through a phone call, or they may even provide an Excel file and say, this is a list of patients that have been 
discharged from the hospital, right? So you have the ability to upload that information into the dashboard and then track uh, your engagement with the patient post-discharge to ensure that you are hitting the appropriate milestones. But uh, how are practices going to get any insights into what patients' reactions are to all of these new features, new capabilities, and new services? Practices should definitely have insight as to uh, how satisfied um, uh, patients are with the various services that are uh, being provided uh, to them. And we do have a post-visit survey that will allow practices to get the appropriate in insight. Now, that post-visit survey can be customized to the practice's need. We call this the net promoter score, which is part of that post-visit survey. So you will have insight into your net promoter score, which will let you know how well you're doing as a practice and where do you need to realign your resources to ensure that you're providing proper customer service to these patients. Well, it's certainly a very valuable way to gain insights. It's convenient. As you mentioned before, all of these things need to be convenient for the practice and for the patients. Uh, and you know, with those out of the box uh, templates for your post-visit uh, questionnaires, as well as ways to basically build your own uh, as like a drag and drop uh, kind of model uh, there, you know, very, very yeah. useful, very Absolutely. handy for practices to stay in touch with their patients and get a get a pulse of, of what their uh, reactions were. Um, Hussein, I'd like to thank you so much for your time here today. We've really appreciated having you on the Clinical Works podcast. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Adam. Well, you can check out our other eClinical Works podcast episodes on iTunes, YouTube, and my.eclinicalworks.com. And if you have any questions about things that you've heard or seen here today, uh, you can get in touch with your strategic account manager or check out my.eclinicalworks.com for more information. For the eClinical Works podcast, I'm Adam Silati, and thanks for watching. <laughs>